Uh, looks like we're on. I guess we're being recorded and not going out live, which is fine. So um, today is Friday, December 6th. Uh, it's a meeting of the Christian Board of Selectmen. This is a, a single issue meeting of why don't we first rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, as I mentioned, this is a single issue meeting. Um, we originally planned on meeting which morning? Monday morning, Tuesday morning, when we ended up getting the Tuesday. Tuesday morning, we ended up getting six inches of snow and a cushion, it, and uh, that wasn't working for, for anyone, so uh, rescheduled to now. And um, again, as I mentioned, this is a single purpose meeting. We've interviewed, um, well, over the last three months, I guess, multiple candidates interviewed for the, uh, to be the successor town administrator in the town of Acushnet. We appointed a screening committee, Mr. Les Dakins here, uh, chaired the screening committee for the town of Acushnet. It was a nine member screening committee. The screening committee put forward um, four candidates, four individuals that they recommended to us as being um, <coughs> their top choices for, for the uh, uh, successor town administrator. And Actually, Mr. Chairman, they put five. Put five, they put five and one ended up dropping out. Thank you for the correction. Correct. They put forward five names. Um, we interviewed four of the five. The fifth candidate decided that there was another who wanted to stay in the position that, that he was in, so we, uh, we never met with that person. But we did meet with um, four, of the f four of the five candidates, and that goes back a week and a half, I believe. We met with one on the Friday and three on the Monday, um, and took some time to deliberate individually as to as to what we wanted to do and who would be the success, successor town administrator. So um, I guess rather than, my, my suggestion would be why don't we have some dialogue first about the candidates and rather jumping into, um, I mean, a motion would be fine, but I'd rather have some dialogue about the candidates and um, you know get a sense as to, as to where you're leaning as individuals and have some conversation about that before we throw a, uh, you know, before we make a motion which needs to be voted up or down. Let's just have some dialogue about what we're thinking, I guess. And, um, I'll start to the far right, Mr. DeRoche, if that's... Um, that's fine, that's fine. I can start. Came down, I might, um, in weighing out the people. We had the interviews last week before Thanksgiving. Um, we were faced with Two choices, the way I see it broken down, is that we had candidates with experience as a town administrator and two candidates with, uh, without the experience as a town administrator. All four involved in local government, um, so they do have experience working that way. Now, taking it from there, I whittled it down to two people from our four, and um, and then it's been a, a toss between which way to go on this because both candidates I believe can do the job effectively uh, what the town needs so who you ask who, who you're, who you're to my two uh, finalists were Ron San Angelo and Julie Ebert okay. here at the town the interim town administrator and who do you who do you think should be the who would your choice be who would my choice be you don't you don't have to disclose now, but I well we're, well, we're there. Well, so yeah, we are, you should. We're we there. are there. I'm I'm tending to lean toward Ron San Angelo. Okay. For the fact I'm having a difficult time figuring out what's gonna to happen to the finance department if Julie moves on and how that whole department is gonna function. Um, she could move on she be, could move on anyway. Are we gonna be hiring more people? You know, can we move up in house? I don't know the, the question. I can't answer that. To see, Julie's done a wonderful job here in town, handling that whole department coming in three years ago and bringing us to where we are today, and she should be commended for that effort. Yeah. And um, you know, so that's really where I've been weighing those two options, okay. coming back and forth okay. on it. You know, Ron, Ron comes with the experience. He's been town administrator in two different towns. Um, he's been in the legislature, I believe, in Connecticut. You know, 
And it wasn't a very easy decision at all. Okay, thank you. If else, you good? Or no, I'm fine. All right, no, yeah. I mean, we can continue no. on. I know, no, I know. Mr. Rizzo, last as the chairman? Um, I, well, I'm deferring, to, I'm deferring to you. I mean, I, uh, any, order, any order you want. Well, I, you know, I, I'd rather not talk about all the candidates, but I guess... No, 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 we're, you know, how, whatever you want to do. Doing, and, you you know, do. I, I, I think that the facts show that Ron San Angelo is clearly the best candidate um, for the town administrator, for the town of Cushman. Um, his resume says so, it proves it. Um, I think the screening committee did their job. I think he was the top pick of, of the screening committee. Um, I've looked over Mr. San Angelo's resume numerous times, as you gentlemen can both look over at my paperwork here, and you'll see X's and pen marks and yellow highlight and pink highlight, and, and I've gone through it numerous times. I mean, just unquestionably, he's he's the he's the individual with the most experience, and and I personally think the best experience um, to lead the town of Acushion. And now, could I be wrong? Sure, I could be wrong. Um, I've been wrong before in the past, right? But um, based on what we have here, you know, I, Ron San Angelo, he's the only one with he's he's the one with the most ex the best experience for me. Jack Healy has all the experience necessary to do the job as well. Um, so there was a, there's an option play with Jack Healy, um, and you know, Miss Hebert. You know, I agree with Miss Doros. You know, she's done a fabulous job in town account. You look, she doesn't have any experience, none of the qualifications. However, um, you know, I know what she's done for the town finance department, and I think she's phenomenal. And that's that's where her forte is. You look at her resume, and that's where it is. It's town account and finance, and she's done a fabulous job. Um, I believe with the town finance department, and I think she's an asset there. Um, you know, I, I don't think that, that this is the right time <coughs> for somebody like Miss Hebert or, or this size town for her to say. That. Again, I, I value her as my town, as the town's not mine, the town's town accountant and finance director, and that's what we hired her for three years ago. And she, you know, that's that's where she brings the most value to me as a select board member. Um, Ron San Angelo, Jack Healy's the, the only two candidates really that fit the, 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 the description of, of the uh, advertisement. Um, with that said, I, I've, I've dealt with Jack in the past with some of cushion issues when he was in Freetown. Um, you know, I, I think that when he came in and interviewed, it wasn't, it wasn't his best performance, um, in all honesty, but his resume speaks for itself. And you just see some, an individual had a bad day. There's, there's some setup there that, you know, we, if we were to go with Jack Healy, we, there's, there's options there. He's, he's coming in at a very low rate of pay because his, his retirement says he can't do it and he can only earn so much money. He made a comment where, you know, if he went with me, I could help Julie. And, I, you know, I, I, again, I think that Ron San Angelo, I spoke with him two different times now on the phone just to make sure that I was trying to make the best decision for the townspeople. You look over his resume, he speaks highly um, of his um, constituencies all the time. He always spoke on the public, bringing the public, working with the public. So it's not somebody that's going to come in and have resistance and not do, I believe, not do what's best for the community. I think it's for the Board of Selectmen. If and when we hire a town administrator, we need to set that objective for our town administrator right away. These are the things that we're working on. These are the things that we like to do. This is how the board operates. This is how we like to see things done, right? I think that, you know, we're coming up on a budget season right now. It's going to be difficult. He's got to, he or she would have to come in. You know, they got to get familiar with our employee contracts, right? That's important for the town administrator to start off on. And he's got to get right into the budgets, right into the budgets. Absolutely. So he's going to start working with all the department is. So I, I would make a recommendation that whoever we hire, I know the advertisement said three and a half years. I, I it would probably turn into a three and a half year, but I would be reluctant to give a three and a half year contract. I would like to do what we've normally done in the past when hiring is a six month probationary period to make sure that this person is a good fit. Um, before we tie ourselves and our taxpayers into a three and a half contract, year contract with anyone. So okay. that's it. Um, I similar to what Mr. DeRoche said. I you know I, I ended up concluding the same thing. We've got we've got two uh, experienced town administrators. We've got two people with with a little bit of experience. Like you know the one thing I said I would do um, 
the one thing I said I would do when I left here is, is talk to members of the screening committee. And I didn't talk to everyone, but I uh, spoke with maybe five or six members of the speech screening committee. Um, just got to the point where I thought I'd, you know, might have gone on, but thought I'd gotten enough of the flavor of the discussion. And, um, you know, screening committee all had mixed opinions. Uh, you know, a lot of them, like Mr. Mullen, um, was, you know, thought that the, he was their preferred candidate. Um, I came down at the end um, to um, Mr. San Angelo and, and Julie, uh, Julie Hebert. Uh, sounds, sounds like the same as the two of you. And I was very impressed by Mr. <coughs> San Angelo and, and his presentation. I think he's a good fit. He's uh, a lot of experience. Um, and also, you know, and, and Julie, again, he and Julie went one, two, and went back and forth with the two of them. I, I, my conclusion was Julie was, was the choice for the town. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you the one thing that I saw that I thought was, um, that, that, I, that impressed me the most. And, and granted, you know, not experienced, but the one thing I learned through this, into, it, this process is um, Julie does not have a degree in finance and does not have a finance background. She sort of learned by doing. And um, I've worked with Julie as, you know, as, as a, a member, of this, member of this board for the last two and a half years. And, and I'm a 40 year finance professional. I never had any clue that she wasn't a, you know, she wasn't a CPA. I mean, so she, in a very short period of time, uh, learned that job very well. And I was on the phone call when she was, she was talking, us, uh, talking with the, the, the bond rating agency about the town of Cushion's bond rating. And, and her going through that presentation and talking about the things that the town of Acushnet is doing to maintain our financial viability and stability and um, and, and planning for the future um, and listen to that and never would have known that she didn't have any type of, of, of finance background. So, I mean, what that impressed me with when I when I learned that she didn't have she wasn't a CPA or or you know degree in finance is that she's somebody that can learn very quickly and I've been I've been very. Um, <clears throat> very impressed with Julie working with Julie on my time uh, on this board and sort of come around that she would be my uh, my preference but also uh, mr. San Angelo um, I, I think would would serve this town well his his uh, his presentation to this board um, you know very impressed very impressed and I, I left I left this meeting thinking after he was the only one that night I left this meeting thinking uh, Boy, I hope they're all this good because I was I was that impressed with Mr. San Angelo. But but my my preference or my would would be Julie would be Julie. But I, I you know no matter what how this comes out, it's feeling like it's it's you know it's one of those two. I will uh, I will support whatever this group decides. So if, if you know we decide Julie, I'm in. If we decide Mr. San Angelo, I'm in. So. The chairman of the committee have anything? Mr. Dakin, do you want to add anything? Mr. Pecos, I'll also go to Mr. Pecos as well. I, you, you I first, will. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will give you some facts, gentlemen. I'm sure you've heard plenty of facts uh, since this whole process started. But uh, given the charge that the committee uh, was faced with, uh, we were asked to screen the candidates with regard to years of experience as town administrator so please forgive me for repeating myself <coughs> years of experience in government positions those with bachelor's or master's degrees uh, master's in public administration demonstrated budget finance experience human resource communications experience collective bargaining purchasing those candidates that had a mass certified public procurement officers rating and others um, each member of the committee as I stated earlier to you gentlemen independently rated uh, each of these candidates unbeknownst to the other members each of those ratings were given to Mr. Pecos to compile and Mr. San Angelo was clearly number one in that category. After the uh, rankings, we ranked the top 10. We then interviewed the top candidates, the top five that we thought. Again, the same process unfolded. And each committee member independently ranked uh, and scored 
the candidates and Mr. San Angelo again was the number one candidate. I, I, can I I'll just interject a little bit though? I did, yeah. I did speak with three members of the screening committee who mm -hmm. told me Mr. Mullen was their first choice. So well, on, a weighted, on a weighted average basis, Mr. San Angelo came out on top. But, yes. but I spoke with three individuals who all told me Mr. Mullen was their, their first choice. That's highly possible. And there could have been <coughs> other candidates that were their first choice as well. Yeah. So overall, in the, in the final analysis between uh, the resume review and, and the interviews, uh, Mr. San Angelo was number one and 26% higher than the number two candidate. So following the charge that, that the board gave us, <coughs> uh, we feel, I feel, and the committee felt as a group, that he was your premier candidate. And it appears that uh, you gentlemen are on the verge of making a difficult decision. Mm. If, uh, me. if it was easy, anyone could do it. But uh, we feel, and I personally feel, if it was my choice, I would uh, acknowledge Mr. San Angelo as your next town administrator. Thank you, Mr. Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pecos, saying to that? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I would only offer this to the board. <clears throat> um, as I've said before, there is um, only one right choice, and that is the choice this board makes. You gentlemen are elected by the public to manage and direct the affairs of the community, and <clears throat> at the end of the day, <clears throat> provided you are presented um, with good finalists, and I'm very happy um, to say that you, the screening committee, as I said before, did an outstanding job. <clears throat> you, had, um, you had an incredible candidate pool, frankly, and I think the committee presented you with excellent finalists. And so <clears throat> it is the case that I don't think you could go wrong with any of your finalists. Um, however, the important thing, and all the finalists know this going into the uh, uh, into the application process. Only one can succeed. And that individual needs to be the person who, by combination of skills and attributes personally, connects with the board and makes the board feel that this person would work well with the board and more importantly even that that would fit well into the community. And so, in the final analysis, the board's choice is the right choice, period. Whoever you pick, that's the right choice. It is, however, Interesting to know <clears throat> that the board came to the exact same conclusion that the screening committee came to. So, nine screening committee members, three selectmen, 12 prominent members of this community all came to the same conclusion with respect to the two finalists. And interestingly enough, um, <clears throat> you came, um, the screening committee, at the end of a difficult process, when they did their scoring, came to the same conclusion in terms of the top candidate that the board, uh, the consensus on the board is. But they I also- I don't think we've got a consensus yet. So. Well, I may, perhaps yeah. not, but um, uh, I'm just reacting to, to yep. what I heard. No, I, I'm hearing the same thing. Yep. But it is clear that the screening committee also felt that there was close competition between your top two candidates. Um, so it's very gratifying to go through what was a very, very lengthy process. I mean, this took less luck three, four months almost, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. um, a lot of meetings, a lot of introspection, um, a lot of very hard work, and it was all, when it was all said and done, um, you know, it, it came down to essentially the same conclusions on the part of the board as it was the screening committee. So irrespective of what you've said so far, whatever you end up deciding, um, it's clear it, it'll be one of these two people, and um, I think both have great strengths, and you can't go wrong with either one of them, and um, whatever the board's decision, uh, is, as I said before, whatever the board's decision is, is the right decision. No doubt about it. And it's been a pleasure, Mr. Chairman, for me to work with you again. I hope not to do this with you once every three years. I hope um, this time that okay, it yeah, stays for a good long time. Um, <clears throat> but I will say it's always a pleasure coming here to work with you. It was a great pleasure to work with Les and with the committee, and um, I, I really I really like a good time. time, so thank you for the opportunity and the honor of, uh, of serving you. Thank you, Mr. Pecos. Thank you. 
Okay, probably time for a motion now. Well, you know, you, you I share my views with Ms. Hebert. Again, I believe she's a great town accounting. I don't think that the board should be paying the current salary of a town administrator for somebody with no experience. Um, if we didn't, if we thought that Julie was going to be the person and we were going to disregard what the committee went through and Mr. Pecos' services, why spend the money um, and go through the process, right? I think that clearly <coughs> Mr. St. Angelo fits the bill, the description of what the town's looking for. He's got the experience. He's procuring an officer. He knows all the ins and outs about the job already. There's not a training process that needs to take place. Um, no disrespect to Ms. Hebert. Um, I think she knows that my feelings are very strong for her. Um, without question, I've had that conversation with her, but at the, at, the, at the current time, based upon the applicants that have been followed through the screening committee, and again, as Mr. Pecos um, said, you know, I think it was nine screening committee members. We all have strong opinions about Mr. San Angelo. We all have strong opinions about Ms. Hebert, but again, the nine committee members came out and I believe that it was, you know, Ron that's, ac Angelo. that's accurate. He was in the yeah. It was. Okay. Absolutely. Look, by the way, the screening committee, we all, uh, with, with some guidance I provided, <clears throat> deliberately did not tell the board what their choice in order of candidates mm -hmm. was. And they did that out of respect for the board because you might well have found another candidate um, who provided greater connection to the board and greater mm -hmm. <coughs> comfort level and you might have chose someone else and we didn't want to have a situation where the screening committee boxed the board in in any way so they didn't want to do that and I think Les just mentioned to that only uh, because you you've made some choices mm -hmm. and so he can say that now it's not going to impinge you in any way but yes that's correct yes, but when, we're not just further to your point I mean we're not required to select Whatever, whatever happened, you know. Yeah, I, no, I understand. So three of them, they, they, they brought in a third. So, you know, it's it's funny you say that, right? Because um, Mr. Mullen, yeah, um, I think he's a, a great, young, intelligent individual. Mm. Um, based on his interview, I, I really do. Um, but again, <coughs> lacks the experience. Yeah, I put him, so, him and Julie. You know, right? I think I. To your point. You know, Mr. Mullen. With, with all the respect to him, I didn't comment on him, and I, I feel it would be unfair that I, I didn't comment on on him. And seeing how you mentioned mm -hmm. the other three committee members mentioning him, I did. I, I'll be honest with you. I felt he was a a bright young individual, I, just lacking the experience, experience. to be able to. Yep. You know, the, the board of, the board of selectmen give the coordinates for the ship to be steered, the town administrator to make sure the ship gets there, right? And that and that's the way that this town government is set up by um, by by law, uh, not by town charter, because Mr. Bingo says we don't officially have one. So the one and I'm not sure if Mr. DeRoche made the comment or, or you did, Mr. Gaspar, that we you know we're not going to pay an inexperienced town administrator, you know, a town administrator. I bet that goes on silent mode, huh? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Everybody wanted to get swim, but um, the you know I, I don't think we would pay an inexperienced town administrator the same thing we would pay an experienced town administrator. So there, I mean, there are other decisions to make at the next step that you know we've got to we've got to settle a contract. We've got to. Mm -hmm. we've who got knows where that's going to end up? Right? What happens if we can't settle a contract with whoever our gonna... choice may be yeah. to be announced yet? Yeah. But we may sit in the room and with he or she, and you know what? It's you know I don't I don't want to do it yeah. for that. And then you know that's why I don't I don't think it's right for anybody. I don't think you have a bad choice. I just looking at the candidates, where where the town needs to go, where the issues the town has, the PJ Keenings, the, the mm -hmm. CWMP water sewer issues, and all these other things. The experience comes into play heavily for me, and I believe that Mr. Ron St. Angelo. Mr. St. Angelo dealt with a landfill, I believe, that is last. He's dealt with a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know he. Again, you, we can all put whatever we want about ourselves on paper. Yep. Only time will tell. That's why I express my feelings about the six-month probationary period. It'll give this board everything it needs to know about an individual and their capability moving this town forward just by going through the budget season. That's the way I see it. I mean, you, you'll be able to see how he interacts with all the department heads that are under the Board of Selectmen's um, purview. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to get that feedback from our department and saying, you know, yeah, things went well, great. Being, you know, yep. hey, forget about this. This is <coughs> terrible, and you know, we reassess. And at that, point, we're not, we're not privy to actually stay with him or her for three and a half years. So, 
Yeah. I think that that's that's the practice we've always done. And Mr. Dakin was a former selectman. It's always been a six month probationary period we give people, um, individuals that come in. And Mr. Bakels is shaking his head like it's probably the right thing to do to prove themselves. They have you have to prove yourself. You don't just <coughs> do jobs and for three and a half year contracts and you can't do the job and you become and I'm going to say it a bum on our taxpayers' back. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the one comment, uh, Mr. DeRoche, you made earlier that I just want to talk about, we shouldn't, a factor we shouldn't consider is we need somebody in the town accountant's office so we can't possibly move them into another position because we may have to deal with that. So that's that's the only, I would, I would that's one I would take off. It's point. a thought, that's all it is. It's a thought, it just, but shouldn't, shouldn't be a factor influencing the decision we can't possibly do without Ms. Hebert in the town accountant's office so we shouldn't give her the opportunity to be the, I just, want, I just wanted to comment on that because I think that's important. And that, that may not be one thing influencing your decision, but I think I needed to comment on it because it's something you could say. She's absolutely an asset in the, in the finance department. I hate to lose her from that position, but mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't want that holding her back either. So, um, and again, I don't, I don't, based on the, the conversation we're having, I don't think we can make a, a bad decision here today. So, is there a motion from uh, one of you two? I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. Appoint Ron St. Angelo as the next town administrator for a six month contract. Is there pending successful negotiations? Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Further discussion? Mr. Chairman, if I might suggest um, <clears throat> the motion is to appoint to a six month contract. Um, no okay. town administrator will Probationary take period. Okay. You can have a probationary period inside of a three-year contract because okay. no town that's manager fine. will take a six-month contract. No, that's fine. And I, we, we, we would discuss <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we figure, well, I figured we'd figure that out. Later. I, would just, just, I would just urge that's, you to modify fine. the motion to say six-month probationary period as part of a three-month or three, three, sorry, half, whatever. three year or three and a half yeah. year. Sure. There's the question I, I'm totally in agreement because with that. you're in the middle of the fiscal year. Do you want? I just want, want, I just want the candidate to understand. They have a six month probationary yeah, that, period. Common. I could give that's two common. hoots and all as if it's three, three and a half. Six Doesn't matter. Just actually it works out well. Depending on when we can get this individual on board. Okay. If say it's J one, January first, it's six months right there. I think you'd have a hard time getting anybody by January one. Um, that's only two weeks away, right? Uh, yeah, give it to uh, three, three weeks. Three, yeah. But um, you won't you won't have a uh, difficult time. And, and uh, anything I can do to help you out, I'll be around to help you. I'm not looking to get paid anymore. I don't want to get paid for this, but, <laughs> um, but I'll be around to help you in any way that I can. Okay. So you're not going to be in any sort of a problem with respect to that. And Julie, um, if, if it she's is an actor's choice, choice right Julie now. is a true professional. She's one of the most professional people I've ever encountered, frankly. And I'm very proud that I recommended her to you three years ago um, <clears throat> from a very talented pool. Um, and she will do great work for you, uh, no matter what the result of uh, today's vote is. By the way, one other thought I just wanted to mention to you. The world sometimes moves in, in, in uh, somewhat strange ways, but as the case is, I was in a room both here and in Southbridge and watched both Julie and Ron um, operate and have watched you know, from a bit afar over the last three years. Both face significant financial challenges and both did an absolutely beautiful job managing them. Um, I see where a cushion it is now three years later from when I was here last, and I see where Southbridge was when I was there. Now, almost the same four years later with Ron's performance, both communities are much stronger. So either one of these individuals, your two finalists, and again, the two finalists the committee determined, both have extraordinary talents in the area of finance, and that's going to be such a good thing for you. It really is. It really is. So, as I said before, you can't go wrong with these candidates. Um, it's um, you very. Uh, it's wonderful to see good folks here. Okay. Thank you for your help getting us here, Mr. Pecos. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Pecos, for your your support once again. Further discussion on the motion and the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm an eye, we're unanimous. <coughs> okay, you will uh, reach out to Mr. San Angelo and... Mr. Chairman, I would be more than happy to trust me because it's 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 always difficult through these processes. I'll, I'll, I'll call him after. But I would prefer that the chair give the good news. Okay, I'll um, do There's, throughout this process, there's been bad news to give the people who didn't make the first cut and not... Yeah, that's your job. That's okay. my job, exactly. Okay. 
Your job is to enjoy the moment. All right, I will. So I will sure wait. Phone number from right here. Sure. I will wait about an hour, which gives the chair time okay. and yep. already board member. As soon as as soon as we are adjourned, I will make a phone call. Can I ask the board for one favor? Um, do you want me to to assist you with contract negotiations? Probably would hurt. Because. Right, if you do, I need to know that now because I've got a, I've got a. Well, we talked about reference checks and. Yeah, I'll, I'll do checks. resume verification yeah, reference checks. We talked about all that. So you're going to do that for us, okay? Um, contract negotiation. I mean, it's too long. We haven't, we haven't had any time at all to discuss. You know where we're coming <coughs> yeah, from. Yeah, well, we need to we need to go into executive something. session to do that. I don't know yeah, if we want to do that today so or we want to. There's two on. there's two models for how to do this, <coughs> and I would strongly urge you to get on with it because. It takes time. So I'm going to assume the chair will ask Ron to send you his draft contract. And please, my suggestion is let him use his format because it's the universal format. All the managers use it. It's the model contract in Massachusetts. Uh, the MMA has endorsed it. Everybody's endorsed it. Um, and he can pull that together pretty quickly because he's probably got one because he's been interviewing. I know that. So he's probably got one. Um, and then you do one of two things. Either um, first you have to have an executive session to talk amongst yourselves about key provisions and then this, and then once you've done that, um, I can either work with him on that contract to get it into as much of what you want as possible and put it in front of you at the end, either done, consistent with the board's wishes, or with only one or two issues remaining. Or the board can bring him in and you can do it yourself um, and that's just as just as fine too. Whatever you do, that on camera. No, you do that in. Um, you said we executive do it in executive session. session. You said we couldn't do that in executive session. No, uh, contract negotiations with non-union personnel is one of the exemptions under the. So we can the, take we can take him into executive session. Um, <coughs> I could have sworn you told us last time you we did. couldn't do that. You can make your discussion in executive yes, session about the that. parameters, absolutely. What about him? I thought and we had to talk with him and take him, him into executive I'm 99% sure you can go into executive session with him. We've done it all the time. Yeah, I whether that's right or wrong. He, no. he, he did, he did. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, I, I, think you're, but uh, I would want I'm you agreeing. to check with counsel. And the reason I'm okay. saying that is because we should. I've had different counsels, different town counsels tell me different things. Isn't on that stuff. nice? <laughs> and I've never... Why would, we'll, 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 we'll Why would that be, Cal? Why would that be? We're going to do it right. We'll get an opinion. And your, your town council really has to yeah. make that call because some of them will say you can't or shouldn't, and others will say you've got an absolute right. I will tell you, I have done it repeatedly. Well, I've just told you we did. In executive <laughs> session. And, yeah, it was yeah, know, perfect. Know, yeah. and trust me, it was my contract, right and I wouldn't have done it if it was illegal because it puts the contract in jeopardy. Um, yeah. But we'll check with council. It's not an issue. So well, you need to you need Mr. The, Mr. Cabral said that you said that you were going to check all the resume facts and yeah, yeah we probably doing make that sure that everything's right. legit. I mean, you, it, it, because it's Ron San Angelo and you were part of that. You were the previous town administrator to so him, done. so you know yeah. what you're two finalists, you. Julie and Ron. There's really no checking right. to you do. Already you already know it's verification. That's all. So uh, we need an executive session. We do not have time today. Uh, we've got meetings scheduled for both Monday and Tuesday night. I'm not sure if we've got one on the agenda for Tuesday night. Tuesday's Monday. Does, doesn't Tuesday have executive meeting? session for uh, to discuss this matter? contract? Yeah, <coughs> potential well, contract. Twenty five minutes. You want to do it? You want to do it now? We can start. Okay. And we can. Uh, all right. You know. All right. I thought we were pressed for time. Okay, that's fine. So we we. we why don't we get a motion to go into executive session to... You need the, the language. Don't you have to be talking yeah, to the language? Yeah, probably. probably. Roll call vote. For, well, for a strategy with respect to bargaining with non-union personnel. Non-union, yeah. So Town administrator. Right. Town administrator. I think the concept will be clear. So. Yeah. All right. Um, yes. Motion to go into executive session for contract, discuss contract strategy with regard to the uh, incoming town administrator. Not to uh, reconvene in open session. Roll call vote, Mr. DeRoche? Yes. Mr. Gasper? Yes. I'm a yes. Okay, we are motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>